Okay, thanks for the introduction and, uh, you know, my, my pleasure to, uh, to, to, to give a talk here uh, for students and looking forward to, uh, you know, to work with uh, some of you. Um, uh, as, as was mentioned, I'm a professor of engineering and my bread and butter is actually space propulsion. So I, I do this, I started doing uh, cancer research as a side project, which quickly, uh, you know, became one of the major ones. Um, so I, I will, uh, you know, make some introduction on the plasma medicine on, on a broad level, but also, you know, we'll go some details, uh, and not to confuse you, but just, just to give a flavor of where is the frontier of, of this kind of research. And if you would like to find more details, you can go to this website and, and, and see, um, you know, some of research uh, uh, that we're doing. We're also involved in some uh, COVID-related work uh, utilizing plasma for disinfection, uh, both on surfaces and airborne. Um, but, so, uh, uh, but today I'm, I'm going to talk about plasma medicine in general and specifically on plasma cancer therapy. And this is, uh, um, don't let me uh, move forward for some reason. Okay, so this is a recent text that was just published, uh, uh, which basically has, it's, it's the first book on, on that topic and it has, um, you know, most uh, of, um, uh, you know, recent uh, research advances in this area. Um, so the, we, we're going to talk about uh, what we call co-plasma, right? And as a smartphone summary, I just want to point out that we are witnesses uh, somewhat of rebirth of physics-based therapies are supposed to chemistry-based, right? And, and, and the core plasmas that we're using, uh, this is not, not much different of, you know, lightning that you can see. And, and see, you, you can actually touch some of these plasmas. So this is, you know, my student fingers, he's, he's doing well uh, after, after maybe many, many years. <laughs> Um, um, uh, so the, what, what is the plasma? Plasma was introduced by um, Erwin Langmuir, uh, who actually got Nobel Prize um, uh, for uh, some other work, uh, not uh, plasma related, but he actually did a seminal contribution to plasma. And, and the idea that any, uh, any matter, um, uh, you know, can go through um, uh, transformation from solid uh, to liquid to gas and eventually to plasma, uh, well, um, when, when temperature increases. And, 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 and pl plasma in that sense uh, is a collection of charges where you're basically able to separate, uh, you know, electrons from atoms. Um, and, you know, Langmuir introduced term plasma. Actually, he, he used, um, you know, blood plasma as, as kind of uh, analogy where you have, uh, you know, different type of platelets and, uh, you know, in the plasma, you have different type of charges, right? So that's kind of similarity. So there is a little bit of confusion when people talk about plasma. I had some uh, small companies that I was involved called Applied Plasma Physics, um, uh, Plasma Osmos Science. And I often was getting calls for blood donation. So there is a real confusion there. Um, uh, so, you know, looking uh, historically, uh, over the hundred years ago, and it started from Tesla and many people uh, at that time started to introduce um, electricity and medicine. And they were thinking at that point that what actually does therapeutic effect is, is a high frequency current that going through the body. And it introduced, uh, you know, some kind of therapeutic. There is no clear mechanism, but, but yet was hundreds and hundreds of clinical uh, studies involved in that books were written. Um, and, and again, it's, it's over, uh, you know, 100, 120 years ago. And some of these devices that were introduced by Tesla, Darson Wild and, and in US is Odin are very similar to what we actually use these days. So one of these devices uh, was, was actually um, introduced by Lukowski, uh, who practiced, um, you know, some of that in New York um, in, uh, in 1920s, uh, around that time. 
and uh, you, you can actually see comparison this is a, a hundred years old uh, plasma device and this is a kind of modern plasma device it's it's a kind of tube uh, they used to produce plasma and uh, and then produce kind of secondary uh jets um and in, you know interact with uh uh with the skin and if you can see it's 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 very very similar and um you know around 1930 1940 uh there was a significant decline and we can just can speculate what, what was the reason um and one, one of this is that kind of pharmaceutical industry uh you know well uh, developed by uh, by that time insulin was uh introduced and and somehow um you know chemistry took over physics but uh we are witnesses now somewhat of a comeback and i hope i will i will give you uh some uh, kind of uh, confidence that this is indeed the case uh so what is a plasma um, as i mentioned it's a fourth state of matter uh you can you can look into different type of plasmas uh, uh you know based on the temperature and um, you know num number of particles per uh, cubic volume there are a lot of you know different plasma in you know in uh in the nature uh solar colonna some uh you know stars plasma lightning as i mentioned uh, probably closest to what we do in the lab but most plasmas actually uh in, in the earth um made in lab right and and this is what we call cold plasma to the pl type of plasmas that we use in the medicine as you can see it's below kind of um uh, around few hundred uh, Kelvin, which basically room temperature. Uh, and the, the the plasmas that we are producing are the plasmas that form in, in open atmosphere. So it's basically, uh, you know, some kind of carrier gas. Um, we are using helium, but many people using argon as well. And, and then you have a presence of, uh, you know, nitrogen and oxygen and and there is a complicated chemistry, uh, probably over a couple thousand of different reactions that we have to solve in order to find a distribution of species. So these are some main ones. And uh, you have charged particles, ions and electrons. And what's more important is the reactive, um, you know, oxygen and nitrogen species. These are some a very similar species that play active role in, uh, in cell chemistry. Um, and and then there is uh, electromagnetic emission. This is something that we noticed very recently. Uh, now, in uh, in terms of species, you know, some of this can be measured by using uh, just a kind of passive uh, emission uh, spectra, and you can notice uh, some oxygen and nitrogen species. This is a kind of precursor that eventually form some more complicated uh, structures, say hydrogen peroxide and 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 others uh, that are important uh, in 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 the in the chemistry uh, that we're doing this. So uh, the the plasma itself that looks like continuous jet really is is a collection of this what we call bullets. These are ionization wave where basically you have a propagation of the area where you able to form a reactive species and this is these are um, structures that moving and very fast and if you take a kind of integrated look what our eye does so you you can see kind of continuous jet right so uh, you know plasma uh, uh, as, a, as a medicine field has already some history it started with um, you know antibacterial uh, some kind of application um uh then i was involved early on 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 some ways uh to help wound healing um and these are some examples and and of course uh, kind of more advanced uh recent uh you know cancer therapy so these are um, i'm, I'm going to skip some of this but basically there there, there are some um uh, needs and uh, important needs for to create some new uh um you know um uh, anti, uh, you know, microbial um, agents, uh, because there is a kind of natural, uh, you know, development of resistance uh, to antibiotic. 
and uh, th these are something that was on on front lines and uh, there's some results and again it's old stuff uh, that was done almost uh, you know 20 years ago but you can see that seconds of application of plasma can uh, lead to uh, several logs of uh, uh, disinfection so this is just the cleaning of surfaces from bacteria uh, these are uh, you know some um, I e. coli uh, gram negative and also uh, as you saw some gram positive and you, you can see the, uh, you know the after um, exposure there is a destruction of 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 this um, uh, you know uh, bacterial uh, structures and, and these are actually good image that can show that there is a full rupture of bacteria and this is uh, just a you know few seconds of application of plasma and and of course the question uh, is what is the mechanism what what really plasma does we can see that you can touch with your finger you don't feel any sensation but yet uh, we do see this uh, strong effect and you know we do some work now on uh, on the um, uh, coronavirus and and we do see that we we can um, you know destroy virus on the surfaces uh, you know very fast so but what is the process that involved in that that's that's kind of question that uh, you know many people try to answer and we will we'll touch some of that so um, uh, people found that the plasma co also can enhance blood coagulation um, and there is important property of plasma. Actually, it kind of helps to seal, uh, you know, the vessels faster. And early on, um, uh, you know, people notice this, and 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 that kind of leads to uh, the whole area of using plasma for cutting uh, during the surgery. There is a whole field of plasma-based uh, surgery uh, that we're not going to talk today. Uh, so wound healing, yeah. So there's some example. I apologize for uh, for some images. I'm gonna skip quickly, but let, let me get to uh, to uh, you know to, to the meat of this talk. And this is kind of summary. Uh, so we can talk about plasma for medicine, specifically for cancer therapy. There are different aspects of it. Uh, this is something that I'm not gonna uh, talk today, based on the fact that you are kind of my understanding pre-med students so you know you don't deal much with physics so we're going to skip this part talking about physics of these jets how to create them how to control them and stuff so um uh you know we'll talk a little bit about some in vitro work also some in vivo work um and and you know i will specifically address a mechanism and some new um interest and understanding of how uh, this kind of uh, new devices based on the plasma can can be utilized to full extent. Um, so, right, uh, you know, looking into cancer therapy, you know, some of that, like chemotherapy, is is systemic treatment, right? So we we treat the entire body. Uh, or radiation, um, it can be localized. Now, surgery, of course, is always local. And the question uh, is, what what uh, you know, co-plasma um, that we are using, what it does? There are, there are some evidences that it can be systemic as well because it can trigger immune system, and and you know, number of people working on that. But on the other hand, uh, you know, um, you 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 can minimize impact and make it uh, you know really um, you know very localized. Um, so, based on uh, just looking holistically of the whole field of, you know, various cancer therapies and stuff, uh, you can see that there is a kind of plateau in efficacy, right? And, and, and this is even if um, uh, toxicity can be controlled, you know, the, the, there is needs uh, to new modalities. Right, and, and and we will see that the, the this cold plasma can can be actually um, um, a representer of, of some new uh, modality. So this work started perhaps in 2004 uh, with um, you know some research done in in Netherlands um, where they they first looked into the you know plasma effect on mammalian cells. And, and then the work by my colleagues at Drexel, uh, you know, found that you can, you can cause some apoptosis in, uh, in 
you know, this is a melanoma cancer cell, right? So this is how it's pretty much started. So on my end, we started uh, some um, somewhere in 2007, and we looked into, you know, uh, application of plasma to cell migration. And we basically, you, I show you this video, this kind of time lapse um, imaging of, for 16 hours, and you can see how cell migrates. And, and what we found that we can slow down cell migration after plasma application. So this is a kind of comparison of tracks of cells, you know, uh, uh, control and, and the plasma. And the idea was that if that's the case, so that perhaps we can prevent metastasis, right? The use in plasma prevent metastasis. And we found that what we do um, is um, uh, activation of integrins. So integrins is some kind of protein chain that, uh, um, uh, you know, attach uh, cells to uh, to the bottom of, of the petri dish, so extracellular matrix, or in, in the tissue attached to other cells. And if uh, integrins are activated, the cell became slower in the motion, right? So, so that's kind of mechanism that, that uh, we uncover. But what really in plasma that does it? Right and and you know we 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 also did some scratches there uh, where you have this uh, cell layer you remove some of the cell and you watch how they close this and uh, you know we, we found that that indeed uh, the the migration became slower so less and less cell would cross particular border and these are uh, control and it's thirty seconds um, and ninety seconds of a plasma treatment these are breast cancer cells. Right? So indeed, it can promote or inhibit, um, um, you know, um, uh, so, some of the cell migration. Um, but what more, more was most interesting um, is that uh, we can um, uh, also um, observe uh, some selectivity. So, so this is, uh, um, uh, you know, cell um, level of viable cells, right? And and you can see that control and and two minutes treatment doesn't do any difference for normal cells. But yet, if you look of, uh, say, neuroblastoma, uh, you know, after 48 hours, after, you know, just a few minutes of plasma application, you have significant decrease. So there is a, a strong differential between reaction of normal cell and the cancer cell, right? And, and, and that suggests that the plasma can be potentially selective. And this is great, right? Because that not, this is, this is what you we want in in the any any therapy. Uh, uh, um, so it, this is not limited uh, to uh, uh, you know this kind of cells. So these are trade lines um, where plasma dosages changes. Uh, these are normal cells. These are cancer cells. So you see, you can kill more cancer cells than normal cells. Actually, best result we found for head and neck cancer, that was work done at John Hopkins um, um, uh, University. And uh, you can see that after 10 seconds of plasma treatment, we kill almost all cells. And yet for normal cells, uh, they stay in touch. So this turns to be the best uh, application of a plasma so far. And this was actually uh, one of the first experiments that sometimes happen like that. Um, so the, this is some work that, that we did on understanding a little bit, um, you know, better, um, uh, you know, some processes that involved. So uh, we worked with an AH and uh, we looked in the three different cell lines. These are normal cells and these are, um, you know, transformed already, uh, um, you know, cancer cells. And, and in that direction, um, there's a, there's a became more and more aggressive. So we looked in the distribution of cell um, into cell cycle. And what we found, so these are different cell lines and, and these are, uh, you know, different times, four hours, and, and we're talking about 30 seconds application. So we see that red is a, is a plasma response. There is a significant concentration of cells at four, 24 hours in G2 um, cycle. So basically G2 arrest, right? This is where, um, uh, where the effect is concentrated and then cell can recover at about uh, 48 hours. But this is very important because now you can combine this with chemotherapy and there are many drugs that actually work only in G2 cycle. And, and that suggests that uh, some kind of hybrid application where plasma can be used as additional modality, you know, can be uh, potentially beneficial, right? And, and we also found that 
what 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 is the mechanism here uh, was um, a DNA damage, and it can be shown as uh, uh, this uh, histone that increased. Um, and, and you know, I'm, I don't want to go into details. You can you can see that this publication if uh, interested uh, to look into this. But the point here that plasma causes 30 seconds application cause um, um, the um, DNA damage uh, for cancer cells specifically. Okay. Now we did some um, uh, you know animal work. Um, the, that work was done almost at the same time in. France, these are some results from French work, and this is our work. And you can see that again, two minutes of plasma treatment can reduce volume of, of a tumor and also increase, um, um, you know, the life expectancy for this uh, um, mice population uh, by more than hundred percent. Now, as a side kind of anecdotal experience when we did uh, this treatment, we need to shave these mice and we, we noticed that after plasma treatment, there is a much faster uh, growth of hair. So perhaps plasma can be used also for, you know, to assist uh, hair growth. Uh, no, no one actually looked into this so far. That's myself in, in the hospital. That was an interesting experience. So this is our plasma device that we, we, we got uh, some FDA permission for limited clinical trials and about 20 cases. Um, there was the first, um, first case uh, that was done actually in, in 2015. Okay. Now, but I will focus specifically on glioma because working with, um, um, you know, um, a lot of uh, oncologists and neurosurgeons, uh, we uh, notice that there is a significant excitement um, uh, when we started to talk about possibility for treating gli uh, glioblastoma or glioma or brain, brain tumor, basically. And this is because there is no a good therapy um, and uh, the best uh, combination uh, of, of different drugs and, and maybe radiation, you know, can improve uh, perhaps by a few months uh, at the most. And, and therefore they're looking for new ways um, and new uh, opportunities. So, um, you know, we started to focus on that um, and, and I showed this already. So we started with the cell lines. We found that indeed it can be selective and, uh, you know, we can also formulate, um, uh, you know, required um, dosage of plasma. We found that, we, you know, it's probably necessary between 30 seconds to two minutes treatment to cause a significant, uh, significant effect. So this is some mice experiment that we did in the brain, as you can see. So um, in this case, we actually treated just for 15 seconds. And, and uh, this is the growth of the tumor uh, over, um, you know, after treatment. And, and this is uh, red, uh, this is after plasma treatment. So you can see that just a single application of plasma can, uh, can significantly reduce, uh, uh, you know, tumor in the mice, right? So this, this kind of great uh, promise uh, for this specific application. But now, um, you know, of course, everyone is concerned with understanding the mechanism. And here we are getting to uh, the main uh, point of my talk, where I would like to contrast, you know, chemical, uh, uh, you know, mechanism with the physical effects, right? And you know, chemical chem, pl plasma does some chemistry, of course. You know, it promotes reactive uh, pro, you know, it, it's kind of pro oxidative stress because plasma it's formed in the air creates uh, reactive oxygen species. These species enter cells and we, I will show you some results, but we obtain that these species enter cells through equiparine. So equiparine is a, a kind of very specialist pores that we discovered um, maybe 15 years ago and Nobel Prize was awarded um, uh, for that discovery. Um, and it turns out that the cancer cells they have more equiparines and therefore they have more chances to uptake these large uh, molecules that plasma produces. And as a result, uh, we can have selectivity, right? But we also found that there is a physical effect associated with plasma. And this is what I, uh, you know, was very, very recent, two years ago discovery, uh, you know, in our lab. And, and we, will, uh, we will focus somewhat on that. And we will see that, uh, you know, between chemistry and physics, 
we can have actually very interesting combination uh, that plasma can offer. Um, so yeah, so so I talk a little bit about this, uh, you know, chemical uh, pathway. So chemical pathway is 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 the following. So we formed reactive oxygen and nitrogen species in the plasma. Uh, some of these cause increase of ROS in the cell. And naturally, cancer cell has elevated level of reactive oxygen, adding the same amount, even same amount, while, uh, you know, we can prove that we can actually add more to cancer cell, can, uh, you know, kind of over threshold and, and cell cannot handle it and will um, will die through natural kind of apoptotic mechanism, um, uh, while normal cell would survive. So basically, this is kind of cartoonish picture that shows that you have more equiparins, more chances for the species to penetrate into cancer cell than normal cell, and that will lead uh, to selectivity. And we proved that mechanism because you can actually block some of these equiparins. And in fact, if you silence them, you can um, basically negate entire effect of the plasma. All right, so knowing down, uh, equiparin significantly, we can to extend that almost no effect of, of the plasma. So that that's that's a kind of chemical pathway. Now, but talking about chemical pathway, you you may ask question, and when I talk about this at the conferences, uh, not plasma related. Of course, when when you go to conferences where only plasma people, we all very excited. But when you go out of your bubble um, to someone from outside and they say, okay, we have a tool to make reactive oxygen species. So, you know, people can ask, hey, um, why do you need plasma for that, right? And it's it's kind of obvious question. So what, what plasma does specifically is that you can just mix some of the species and, and make a drug and, 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 uh, and deliver this drug, right? So why do you need plasma? So it's some kind of fancy way to do it the same. So um, my answer to this, and we kind of came to that several years ago, and the idea is that plasma can be adapt adaptive in real time. In other words, what you do is um, you, you make some species and, and then you interact with that cocktail with cells and tissue. And if there is a way to monitor in real time response of cells uh, to the plasma treatment through the feedback, you can adjust this chemistry in real time in a matter of nanoseconds and can do it differently. And therefore you can be very, very specific, basically personal. And that's unique. That's you can't make a drug like that that can actually change itself as you uh, you know as you swallow this drug, right? So, but the plasma is a drug that you 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 know you you can imagine you can swallow it and it will figure out uh, what is the best dose for you or not for you but for but for a particular person. Right, so so the, we call the adaptive plasma platform, and that's involved. Uh, of course, imaging, but also it's involved the feedback, some machine learning, artificial intelligence that can be utilized uh, for that matter. So I can skip that part, but what I will show you also that, you know, it's amazingly, but, but the plasma itself can ad adjust even without artificial intelligence and feedback mechanism, plasma can sense different cells. So you see, this is a plasma measurement of say density of plasma, right? In the, in the presence of different cells, and you can see the different cells actually change plasma itself. And more though, so we did some interesting experiment where we place normal cells in cancer cell and we shoot plasma in the middle and we see that the plasmas actually change shifted toward the cancer cell. And, and the, the reason is that, uh, you know, cancer cell has different electrical properties and turns out that that's enough to cause this shift. Now, it's not always will be the case, but at least in some mechanism, in some instances, uh, you know, plasma can be self-adaptive. But, but here's an example of adaptive platform that one of my PhD students developed. So, so you have a, you know, any plasma source and then you create chemistry, reactive oxygen, nitrogen species. You interact with cells, you monitor response, you go through feedback and change through change in voltage, gas, uh, and, and uh, maybe treatment time and so forth. And, and, you know, this is how it looks like. Uh, right, so we, we do the treatment and we're using for that real time glow cell that actually monitor in real time a uh, state of cells. And if cell alive, 
it will emit a light if it's uh, suppressed and um, uh, it will stop emitting light or um, you know, kind of less light or so. Um, uh, so what, what, what I would demonstrate to you that we actually can differentiate response uh, for different times. You see, there's a different treatment times and you can see that the cell respond in real time differently. Now, what was more important that we also can sense different voltage. So you apply different voltage to plasma and you can see different response. So now you can utilize this in the feedback and you know can in real time adjust what necessary if you if you let's say decide that you want to kill uh, you know half cells for whatever reason, right? So you can you can do it. And I will show you that it, actually it can be done differently. We can also use impedance, basically electrical measurement of cells in real time. And we found that this, this measurement is actually linearly proportional with the cell viability. So there is a kind of strong correlation. And this is actually the system that we build based on that. So there is an impedance diagnostic, machine learning, and goes in the cycle. And this is the result of this adaptive control that creates some kind of middle road. So you can, you not overkill cells, but you not underkill and you do it just right, right? So this is one example. Now, this probably for this audience, maybe a little bit uh, over your head. Um, I just, just, I didn't want to complicate things, but just want to illustrate you how machine learning can be used, right? So this is ba basically system that we use. We have a target, which is cells. We have a plasma. Uh, we have some kind of ways to change uh, feed into plasma and we have an algorithm, right? And then, you know, we can scan cells by using some Gaussian system, as you can see, and this can lead to monitoring what happened during the treatment. And then we can use model predictive control to change. Now for that, you actually need some model. In other words, you have to accumulate some data, big data, and then you can use this big data, put this in your computer, and this will be your guiding principle. But later on, we realize, and you know, it can improve. You can see that uh, more model predictive control can do much better job uh, with the treatment goals and without, right? There is a kind of deviation without, and you can actually get closer to what you want. But for that, of course, you have to have a model. So in other words, first you need to run a lot of experiments on different cells to uh, gather all of that data and then try to figure out how to use it. But what we found that actually the, you, there is a way to use deep um, machine learning where you build artificial neural network that basically represent the model. And you, uh, by solving that, you can, um, you know, find um, a way to, uh, you know, to do this adaptation without any, any initial model. So it's a little bit complicated, but the, 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 the key result, uh, what I wanted to show you here, that you can obtain the real-time composition of the plasma without actually doing any measurements and just running this through the computer simulation. And there's a different species that exists in the plasma based on this uh, kind of, artificial intelligence that we utilize. Okay, now what, what we found, and then we're getting now more to the physics-based uh, um, um, idea. What, what we found is the following, that the, uh, you know, in addition to the species, this, you know, all different reactive oxygen and nitrogen species that plasma does, what plasma really does is uh, some kind of initial activation or sensitization of cell. Just to illustrate it, see what happened is when you have cells and you have media, of course, you have to have cell culture media, right? With some uh, vitamins and uh, amino acids and stuff. And, and when you treat this plasma, you create this reactive species. Now, and this reactive species interact with cells and, and that can lead to the damage of these cells. But what you can also do, you can actually treat this media before cells, right? And then put this media on cells and you can get almost the same effect, right? Because if at the end of the day, what plasma does is produces, uh, you know, species. You don't need cells uh, to do the, uh, you know, to do this species production. You can do it without cell, and then just use this as a new drug and apply this drug to cells, right? Now, but there is a difference. 
anyone who does these experiments, first, everyone was excited. Oh, hey, you know, I, I don't need to put cells in the plasma. You guys, I can do this separately. And then you can store this for a couple of days and then you can, you can bring this elsewhere and, and uh, as a drug and, and use it against cells. And this is great. But, but yet, everyone noticed that there is a slight difference, sometimes slight, sometimes significant difference between these two approaches, right? And they're not the same. Now, what we did, we did the experiment, which is, um, let's see, I will try to explain is the following. So, you know, you do one step treatment, which is cause significant kill of cells, which means basically you treat in, uh, you know, cells with the media one time and you can kill say in this case 70 percent of cells right okay and and and, uh, and then what you can do you can treat with um you know cells with media but then immediately remove media which is already contaminated with all species and put fresh media so in that case right if if you do it this is this is a this is a case without uh, right so you 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 basically you you basically have no effect at all Right now, you can take say hydrogen peroxide, which is a proxy for some of the plasma tree, uh, species, and find very small concentration that are not going to be toxic. So say uh, you know in this particular case, you take this concentration, um, uh, and you're talking about uh, without activation, right? This um, yellow bar. So this yellow bar again, this is control. This is yellow bar. You see, it, it doesn't do anything. But now you treat cells with a plasma, then change media, remove all species, put fresh media, and then you add the same amount of this non-toxic amount of um, H202, and now it became toxic, as you can see. So, 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 so this is this is a bar. You see the difference. Of, and if you increase a little bit, so you can see that at some point you can make it exactly the same as the plasma alone. So in other words, the, when you treat cells with the plasma, even without species, you still produce some act initial activation. And then, uh, uh, you know, this became sensitive to uh, any treatment, right? So you can use any drug. So we found that activation start after about 20 seconds of plasma treatment. Again, no species because we remove all the species. And this effect stays for a couple hours. It disappears after maybe three hours or so, right? So this basically suggests that there is a kind of um, not chemical effect of, of, uh, of uh, you know, plasma on the cell. And we, try, we started to utilize this. Now we started to call it physical treatment. So basically what we did, we basically blocked um, Petri dish. We close this with, with a cup and, and treat it with a plasma. And we still saw significant effect of a kill, right? So we can kill still cells, even if we block all species um, in, in this case, right? So, um, and we also found that the, the, the cell death is very different. You see this bubbling that happening and it looks like more for, as a cooking, but it's a cooking without any temperature. We don't heat cells, but yet we kind of disrupt cell membrane and there is a media that kind of spill over and in form of these bubbles, right? Now, um, uh, you, you can also ask, uh, okay, so what's the difference between chemical and physical treatment? So here is, is a result. So for some cells, and this is um, a very strong, very resistant cell line, melanoma that's very hard to kill. And people in plasma community, at least, were, you know, were very kind of worry that there's no really any effect. As you can see, chemically, there is no any effect, but physically, you can actually kill the cells. So, right? And you can see on the morphology, there is a significant difference after already one minute. Right. So uh, looking into this, we started to investigate what in addition plasma does. And we found that plasma produces, of course, electromagnetic radiation because plasma is kind of electrical uh, uh, system. Right. And, and this radiation is in, in, um, in has uh, four different peaks um, in our plasma uh, discharges and, you know, somewhere in the, in, in, in the magnitude of tens of gigahertz. Right. Just. Let's, let's keep this in mind. And, uh, you know, based on that, 
we we said okay so why don't we need why do we need this gas flow and stuff let's make all contained in the tube so we call it discharge tube so it's all in the glass tube there is no flows there's no any chemistry and yet we we can produce the same species with a different uh, sorry same same um uh, you know electromagnetic uh, emission and here we use this to synthesize um, cancer cell to standard care chemotherapy, TMZ, temazole that used for brain tumor. So you can see that initial sensitization by seven minutes, uh, standalone doesn't do anything. You see this bar, you don't, it's the same as control. You don't kill any cells by just, just discharge you. You don't heat it, you don't do any damage, but yet if you treat and then apply drug, which is small concentration that was not toxic, now became very, very toxic. You see this last bar. So basically that's the idea that now you can reduce toxicity by you know, using this uh, you know, plasma system to synthesize uh, tumor, and then you can, uh, you know, may, you can uh, you know, add a much smaller concentration of a drug and get the same result. So now we're looking into some clinical trials that uh, will get that. Now also comparing chemical versus physical treatment, we see that for some cell lines, uh, you know, chemical is not selective, but for some physical is not selective um, or selective. So, so for these cell lines, for example, this is a brain tumor. You see the, their physical is, does much better job and more selective to, toward the cancer cell than to normal cells, why the chemical, if you just do chemistry, turns out that you can you can kill a lot of healthy brain cells, which is not good, right? Um, so the, the chemical treatment may not be the best in this particular case. And now the different cell line, this is uh, bladder cancer. Um, again, you can see that the physical treatment, in this case, for these cell lines, physical treatment is not good, chemical is much better. But yet for other cell lines, for example, for this one, Physical is good, but chemicals don't matter. Basically, what we found is that you can actually have combination and you can play with that. And sometimes you may need to use chemical. Now, remember, when you're using chemical, you can actually do it adaptively and it can be very personalized or you can use um, only physical treatment, right? And these are some very recent, uh, you know, mice result. Again, in this case, we are treating through the skin we don't inject plasma, it's fully non-invasive. And there is a strong effect of combination of drug and the plasma, right? So this is a two minutes treatment and you see that combination leads to significant decrease of, uh, um, of a tumor volume, right? We compare with a drug alone. So this is a drug and this is a, a plasma sensitization of the drug, three, three fold decrease. And this is a case where we use discharge tube. And in this case, we can see twofold decrease by discharge tube itself, right? And uh, let me skip it. And I, I think I'm out of time and um, uh, by two minutes, it's exactly, I was late two minutes. So, <laughs> um, uh, so basically these are my conclusions. Uh, so the, you know, we, you see that we, we can actually use direct uh, brain tumor treatment utilizing plasmas. We get, we get along with understanding, um, you know, some um, hypothesis um, uh, that involved in this uh, new plasma treatment. Now we're talking about chemistry. We, we found that uh, plasma adaptation is a key and, and maybe very important to really optimize treatment. But yet on the other hand, you know, plasma can be used as, as a kind of, um, 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 additional modality through sensitization to standard care chemotherapy. And this is the key, because if we use in standard care, we, we kind of, we have a pathway to get to, uh, to the clinic much faster if, um, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and so we can actually uh, just start with adding this as, as a new modality with, with, a, with of course, a noble aim to reduce uh, toxicity. And uh, so I just want to acknowledge all different uh, agencies that support our work. I want to thank you. And uh, I guess we have, you know, some time for questions or we can do it later. I'm not sure what's your um, schedule. Thanks so much.